Hello, today I'm going to be discussing topics from ego and archetype, individuation and the religious functions of the psyche, a book by Edward, Edward F. Edinger. An ego is a person's sense of self-acceptance or self-importance. For example, a boost to my ego. And an archetype is a noun, the original pattern or model of which all things of the same types of are representations or copy t- copies. Prototype, also. A perfect example. Definition 2. A transcendent entity that is a real pattern of which existing things are imperfect representations or an idea. Edward F. Edinger was a medical psychiatrist, Jungian analyst, and American writer. He began his analyst with Mary Esther Harding, who had been associated with C.G. Young. He was born on December 13, 1922, in Cedar Rapids, Ohio, earning his bachelor's in chemistry at Indiana University and his M.D. at Yale University in 1946. He was also a military doctor in the United States Navy in Panama. Part 1. Individuation and the Stages of Development What is it about you that when you look inside about your personality and character that you could not give up without giving up you? This should include traits of characters and values that you feel you've always had as far back as you can remember being you. 2. Your earliest memories, no matter how recent or far back, but the earliest nevertheless. 3. Following the through line of your life forward from your earliest memories, passing through as many personally significant memories and events that you can, consider your life transitions and your friendships, relationships, everything that emerges and gathers around the through line. What emerges will be your personal development thus far and all the stable traits of your personality. To access these, use whatever sensory modalities seem most appropriate. If through internal imagery, internal sounds, visceral states, allow them to form and associate together. Think of it as an Ardean thread into the labyrinth of your personal timeline. Know thyself, a preliminary outline. Copyright Stephen T. Richards by Pauline A. Richards, 1989 to 2021. Psychosystems Analysis. Number four. Do not suppress memories of personal failings unless they are disturbing. This is a caveat for the whole process. Do not attempt it or immediately stop it. If you have an adverse reaction or feel that any emotion constellated are too difficult. 5. You have you will have uncovered your personal myth about your life and who you are. A myth in the sense that it is living, reflexive, and autobiographical narrative. And in that which Jung meant when he said that people cannot tell the truth about themselves in an objective way. This is the truth of ourselves that sits at the very heart of our ego and its self-concept. 6. On the positive side, it gives us a mirror within which to reflect upon our most fundamental sense of ego identity and our values, especially those we cannot give up. On the negative side, the through line of our personal myth, myth also uncovers all of our neuroses, inflexibilities, maladaptations, Sorry, maladaptations and personal failings. Even our shadow. More on this specifics of this later. Number seven. Around the through line will gather external mythological motifs and beliefs. Religious and political, for example, but also symbolic. Narratives of cultures such as films, novels, and all fantasy products of culture that have a sympathetic resonance with our through line. Number eight, be reflexive. This doesn't mean analytical in a one-sided example, T.I., young in introverted thinking function sense. It means using evaluative capacities in equal measure to analysis. Copyright Stephen T. Richards, Pauline A. Richards, 1989-2021, Psychosystems Analysis. See yourself in the context of when you came to consciousness as a ready-made being. From your earliest memories, if it is in child, early childhood, early childhood, run the thought experiment reflexively. Who was I before that memory? Did I exist prior to my being able to fix a time and a place defined by the memory? You will, of course, immediately realize that you did exist.
We are a biological, a psychological, and a social entity, an individual with an identity relevant to others before your sense of self, as established by your earliest memory, was laid down. Working on your shadow, this is only a starting point. Shadow needs a very careful explication, but for now reflect on this. Around the through line gathers all that you are, emerging as an unfolding process of a priori characteristics develop into the conscious remembering self that is your ego today. Around it also gathers every personal failure, every dark inclination, every contrary morale, every contravened ethic and neurotic alibi, alibis, the guiding fictions and all and false narratives that have defined you equally as much. As your triumphs and higher values reflect, as your triumphs and higher values reflect on these two oppositely charged poles: the the adaptive and maladaptive. Maladaptive. Evaluate them in terms of the core of your personal myth. Use the results to check yourself against yourself, and reach even deeper into the roots of your being around the very central axis of your through line. Where you, you will find not only your past, but the intended theological goal of your life's trajectory. Copyright Stephen T. Richards and Pauline Richards, 1989-2021, Psychosystems Analysis. A personal myth is not a collective myth. Number nine, interjecting a collective myth of any kind may help, help you close in on your personal myth, but it may also conceal it or divert it divert you away and into a guiding fiction or an erotic alibi the true progression is personal myth personal equation then the path to individuation so the inflated ego this is a picture of icarus if you know this the myth of icarus you know that he flew way too high and his wings burned and he fell down and crashed into the ocean the sun will not overstep his measures. If he does, the Arrhenius, the handmaids of justice, will find him out. Heraclitus. An inflated ego disturbs a person's ability to recognize the truth in themselves or in others. Most people with inflated egos tend to react intensely and take things very personally because others might view them as selfish or withdrawn. They often struggle with intimate relationships. Why do people have inflated egos? In some people, it is due to a lack of self-confidence, which they try to hide by bossing over others. Overconfidence may be the cause for exaggerated egos in some persons. Just because of some skill they have, they regard others to be morons who they have come to salvage. The alienated ego is the inner refusal to be oneself in the moment, the fantasy that sometime in the future the real thing will come about. One will be able to save the world one day. The man dressed dread this man dreads to be bound to anything whatever whatsoever, a fear of being pinned down, entering space and time completely, being the one human that one is. He is full of talents and potentialities and could not do anything but can and but cannot decide on one thing. This man must give up his identification with his self except being a small fragment, to be something he must give up potentialities. If one is to have a fantasy but give no reality to it, it is the same as staying in the state of unconsciousness, wholeness, living in the garden of Eden and not daring to bite the fruit of consciousness. It is the fear of making something real or of exposing himself, oneself to disapproval, to submit oneself to judgment by being something definite. It is also a symptom of damage to the ego self-access or a lack of self-acceptance. The experience of acceptance repairs the ego's, ego's self-access. Uh, acceptance of the shadow and compassion for the inferior inner man are equivalent to acceptance of the self. If such a person can experience the fact that his individuality and personal worth are being are beyond are beyond all particular manifestations, his security will no longer be threatened by the accomplishments of others. 
And here I'll play a clip by Disney's The Lion King where Simba is lost and he has is experiencing an alienated ego. All right, as you can see from that clip, Simba was very alienated and he needed Pumbaa and Simone to help him out of that disparity and God. Encounter with the self by his libido shall he know himself, Stephen T. Richards. One can, of course, explain all neuroses in Freudian or Aldarian terms, but in practice it is better to examine the case carefully beforehand. In the case of an educated people, the decision is not difficult. I advise them to read a bit of Freud and a bit of Adler. As a rule, they soon find out which of the two suits them best. So as long as one is moving in the sphere of genuine neuroses, one cannot dispense with the views of either Freud or Adler. Carl Gustav Jung, in a collective works, volume 16, The Practice of Psychotherapy. So here we have Van Gogh painting... I believe a self-portrait of himself. So the idea is that your encounter with self is like seeing something. You seeing yourself through a way bigger lens. Um, it's as if you're a fish in a big ocean, and you finally get to see who you are in that ocean. And this here's an example of alienated ego, where it's um. His encounter with the with the self, probing Gustave's Corbett's inner thoughts in the desperate man. Here's a, a painting. By the artist's own token, the desperate man should be taken as a little ex, literal, literal expression of his lived experience. When in 1843, when Corbett undertook this anxious self-portrait, he was a young man without a manifesto, still laboring to build his reputation. Um, despised his enthusiastic drive, Corbett was still searching for his own artistic identity. Yet he found himself growing increasingly disillusioned by the artist's as establishment as he faced repeated rejection from the state sanctioned salon. Alright, and that concludes part one of Ego and the Archetype by Edward F. Edinger. Part two will be done in the near future other than that thank you for watching um i give credit to pauline and steve richardson or sorry stephen t richards and pauline pauline a richards
for helping me for ha having the information in the slide number three without further ado thank you and have a good day